Okay, let's go. Buongiorno. It's time to start traveling again after staying for way too long in the same place. We are on the way to start the Via Francigena and on the way we had a little stop in Venice and we made a very nice video. If you're new to this channel, that's Amy, I'm Chris and this is what you missed so far. We took a night jet from Vienna directly to Venice with a private area which was surprisingly inexpensive. It took us 11 hours in total with a 2 hour stop in Salzburg. The ride was probably as comfortable as an 11 hour train ride could be. Still finding sleep wasn't the easiest but as we were sick for most of the last 3 months we were so hyped to be able to travel again that we forgot about the lack of sleep pretty fast. So why would we, we are most happy when surrounded by nature and not people, go into one of Italy's most touristy places? Well, first of all, Venice is beautiful and a really unique place to be and if you got a chance you should definitely visit it. Also there are a lot of things beyond St. Mark's Cathedral and the Doge Palace and there is a lot of great food too. So let's give it a try and make this not like any other Venice travel video. Let's get into it. Today we are going to Murano where we will learn a lot about glass and blowing. Venice is famous for its craftsmanship. From mask making, silk sewing to the very elaborate process of filling gondolas, there is a huge history and tradition of this island. Many of those crafts you can watch first hand like the Squero di San Trovaso. Gondolas are built and repaired here since the 17th century. What we are going for today is a bit more fragile. We are on our way to Murano, where we will be introduced into the secrets of the world famous Murano castle. The island is a little off of San Marco, where we stay and so we have to take the Vaporetto, the water bus of Venice. A day pass is 25 euros and you can get on and off as often as you want at all stations. In under 10 minutes you reach Murano and you immediately see the countless glass manufacturers who sell the products along the street. If you decide to buy anything in Venice, glass, masks, whatever, make sure the shop has one of the stickers on the door like uh, Venezia Authentica or Venice Original to make sure your project is really high quality and made in Venice. One really cool thing in Murano is that you can visit some of the glass makers and they let you watch how they work and also explain a little bit about the job. Christina and Andrea, who are artists and do a lot with glass as well. They offer workshops and after a little briefing and some exercises they let us work on the glass ourselves, which was really fun as you see the progress pretty fast. It's important to heat the glass slowly as it cracks pretty easy when the temperature changes too fast. Every color of glass is made with different ingredients, so you gotta learn how all the different colors react when heated. After only two hours we went home with some new knowledge and some pretty cool beads. Fun fact to those beads, they were very precious goods when the merchants were off to foreign lands as they were easy to carry with you but had much worth. That's the reason why you find a lot of Murano glass in foreign countries like Morocco. If you're interested in doing a workshop yourself 
or just visit for a coffee, you will find the link in the description. Ein Profi. Ein Profi. After about half an hour, the beans are already cooled down and ready to go home with you. And Amy already made a really cool necklace out of some. Look at that! So, from craftsmanship to some other profession which probably has its roots here in Venice. This is Banco Rosso in the Ghetto di Venezia and why this is such an interesting topic I will tell you in a few seconds. But first, if you enjoyed this awesome transition, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more random travel content. Many people don't know it, but Venice has, compared to its size, a pretty big Jewish quarter, which was actually the first ghetto to ever exist. Yalla! Over 500 years ago, in 1516, Leonardo Loredan, who was the doge of Venice at the time, issued a decree that defined an area of the city as the sole residential area for Jews. This was the first time in history that Jews had the right, but were also forced to live in a restricted part of the city, which in this case was closed off by three gates. The gates were closed at night so nobody could leave or get into the ghetto. Also the synagogues, there are five of them in the area, were not allowed, so from the outside they mostly looked like the other houses. The story of Banco Rosso is simple yet weird. It was forbidden for Christians to lend money, so they allowed the Jews to do those jobs. In order to get money you had to leave some object there and so it is considered that Banco Rosso was one of the first pawn shops worldwide. And why do we call it ghetto? Well, a foundry in Venetian language is called Ghetto. I hope I pronounced it right. If not, please correct me in the comments. Where the ghetto was built, there were a lot of those foundries. And probably due to a little mispronunciation of the Jews who came from Northern European countries, the word ghetto established and is still used today. Before ending this video, I want to tell you some Venice information which I didn't find in all of the other videos. First of all, normal gondola rides start at 8 euros for 30 minutes. If you're broke as fuck but still want to have your gondola experience, go to the Traghetto stations. You will have a short 1 minute ride across the Canal Grande, but it's only 2 euros per person and it's worth the experience. Also, Venice has a lot of small parks which are sometimes a bit hidden. But if you need some distance to the masses of tourists, see if there is one close by and do what people do in parks like getting terribly drunk. Visit the markets. There is the famous Rialto Mercado, a fish, vegetable and fruit market which starts every day at 7.30 am. You will find the freshest fish and also the best wedges directly from the Garden of Venice, San Erasmo. Overall, Venice doesn't have to be expensive. Trust me, it's affordable even for budget travelers, otherwise we wouldn't be here. You can easily spend 50 bucks a meal, um, but there are also a lot of places where you get a pizza or a portion of pasta for a few euros. What also works really really good is the Too Good To Go app. Um, if you never heard about it, Google it too good to go, it's a nice thing and you can save a lot of money, especially here in Venice. Well, that's it! I hope you enjoyed the video and are already hyped for the next one, where we will be in Tuscany to hike the Via Francigena. Until then, stay safe and have a good time! Bye bye!